The next name brand rapper in Philly to crash out in the streets, and arguably in the music too, wasn't from the disrespectful crew YBC, but actually an allied set called PNB, more specifically their violent younger generation called the Torchers from the Germantown area in northwest Philly, with this case revolving around one of their most prominent members, Hop Out Blick. Germantown is another area that's seen a rise in gang-related violence in recent years, with the war between PNB and their ops also going back years and involving numerous deaths, including PNB Rock's brother's death, who was shot and killed in June 2016 in East Germantown, allegedly by members from a set called Westside Mafia or WSM. Hop Out Blick's younger generation called the Torchers have continued the war to this day, as well as starting new rivalries, but also making affiliations, one of these being with YBC. Hop Out Blick was known for his extremely disrespectful and violent music, like December 2022 when he dropped the song Torture Party, where he raps that if you want to be a torture, you have to kill an op, before rapping how someone came out and got killed and insinuating that this was due to a woman backdooring him. This is likely a reference to a man called Nemo, real name Niam Johnson. Tate from Westside Mafia, who was allegedly killed as a getback for PNB Steph. His murder, according to his mother, being a setup where someone would lure him out with a phone call, and at the end of the video, someone from the Torchers can be seen peeing on the street sign of West Sharpnack Street, which is in Westside Mafia's hood. Torture Party would later become Hop Out Blick's first song to hit a million views while he was already locked up. Then there's the song Big Torchers, released in early March 2023, with a music video and lyrics of the song, including numerous mentions of how he's killing his ops for Lil Jar. Real name Jar Custis, a 16 year old who was killed all the way back in 2017, with a guy named Gunner allegedly claiming this murder, which is why he would, according to Hop Out Blix raps, be killed by PNB and tortures some years later. In an all too familiar pattern in this story, once again, Jar wasn't even reportedly the intended target, but was hit because he would bravely run towards the fire to get his young cousins to safety. Back home, the Germantown section of Philadelphia was the scene tonight of an emotional vigil memorializing 16 year old Jai Kustis. He was killed in a hail of gunfire two nights ago on East Pastoria Street. Action News reporter Christy Aletta was live at police headquarters tonight. Christy, you have learned that Kustis was taking heroic action just before he was shot. That's right, Jim. Jai's family says that he, in fact, ran towards the gunfire to get his younger cousins out of harm's way, not knowing in turn that he would lose his life. He said, if I get shot, I get shot. Speaking for her granddaughter Kia, Melinda Custis says those were the last words her grandson Jai Custis said to his 13 year old cousin as he ran towards East Pastorius in Banton. A bullet grazed Kia in the arm and pierced the 16 year old in the back, ending his life. This could be a whole different story. We could be planning for two films. He ran past his house, which he could have ran in, but he, the other little children were still out. So he was making sure that the other children got to what they needed to get. His family calls his actions heroic and don't believe that he was the intended target. Only collateral damage and the ongoing gun violence gripping city streets. On April the 26th, 2023, Hop Out Blick would release the song and music video titled Shake the Switch, where he would continue his usual wild antics, before also mentioning at the end of the song how he just got his gun hot, presumably from doing a shooting, and that he's trying to swap his Glock. As it just so happens, only two days after the release of this music video on the 28th, of April 2023, it would turn out that Hop Out Blick was indeed looking to get a new gun. But unfortunately, he and his friends weren't apparently interested in a fair exchange. Around 3.35 p.m., police would respond to a shooting near the intersection of Comley and Palmetto in northeast Philly. When they arrived, they found an absolutely brutal scene, with three teenagers laying shot to death, all in different locations around a house and the front sidewalk on the 5900 block of Palmetto Street, with one of the victims being found on the porch, another just inside the house, and a third on the sidewalk. A fourth victim would also be dropped off at the Jefferson Frank Hospital, but he would fortunately survive. Police would find a gun at the scene and identify a car used to transport the surviving victim to the hospital. According to paperwork posted on Reddit, the car would then attempt to flee from the cops, but would crash about two miles from the shooting scene. In the car, police would arrest two teenagers who would turn out to be friends of two of the victims. One of these youths would turn out to be on electronic monitoring while on juvenile probation, and the cops were able to use that data to locate him inside the house during the shooting. Then, someone who had been in the house during the shooting would provide a statement to the police explaining exactly what had taken place. According to the witness, there was a pre-planned meeting at a house on Palmetto Street where five people arrived at the home to purchase and or swap some guns. In the house, the buyers would give $1,000 for two men to buy a gun, but before any gun was produced, shots would ring out from the direction of the front door, to which one of the buyers would respond by seemingly shooting in that direction. When the smoke
smoke cleared, the witness would observe three people shot, one of these being one of the supposed gun sellers who was laying down on the front porch and breathing heavily, another one of the buyers who had responded to the original shooting who was now laying down in the living room and bleeding heavily too, and the third one, also one of the buyers who was also shot in the chest, this likely being the person who would be taken to a hospital to survive. A later report on the event would identify the three dead victims as 17-year-old Malik Ballard, also known as Leek or Leaky, who was found on the front sidewalk, and a 14-year-old by the name of Salah Fleming, also known as Dirt Bike La, who was found in the living room, both allegedly from a set called 20 Street or No Chills from the 20th of Montgomery, as well as Khalif Freggy, also known as Leafy or Switchy, allegedly from the PNB or Torture set, who was found on the front porch. The paperwork posted on Reddit would also reveal that the supposed sellers of a gun had first arrived at the property about 50 minutes prior to the shooting, according to security cameras. This would end up being the house of the two sellers, cousins Tyree Lennon, also known as PNB FA, and Taj Lennon, also known as Baby Stu. Although the sellers would still access the house from the back alley, with Baby Stu climbing to the kitchen deck before letting others through the rear basement, however, some minutes before the shooting, some of the sellers appear to exit from the back and go back to their cars, during which at least two of them swap their hoodies. Khalif Reggie, aka Leafy or Switchy, and none other than Kaiser Reeves, aka Hop Out Blick, before re-entering the house from the back. Soon after, shots can be heard ringing out before the sellers exit from the back and flee with their cars. However, sometime later, Reeves, aka Hop Out Blick, would actually return to the scene with a man named Kevin Yip, better known as BD from the Tortures, to check on Leafy, but the two would seemingly quickly realise that he had likely already passed away. However, the defence has argued that the surveillance camera videos are incredibly grainy, making it questionable if positive identifications can even be made. Sometime after the shooting, BD would make a shocking post on his Instagram story, posting a picture of Leafy, saying how they got a two for one, and he's fine with that, meaning that they may have lost Leafy, but it was worth it, as they were at least able to take out two of their rivals. Following the incident, people on Reddit would also say that Hop Out Blick was dead himself, with people even comparing the streets to basketball again, saying that Blick and his friends got hit, and that his ops might have made a four-point play, with some saying that hanging out with Dool probably caused his death. But of course, Hop Out Blick was not dead, although he would soon be in big trouble. In early May, only a few days after the shooting, police would give an announcement that they had identified two of the people who were now wanted for the shooting from the torture side, cousins Tyree Lennon and Taj Lennon, aka PNBFA and Baby Stu. Now at four o'clock, wanted in connection with the shooting that killed three teens. This afternoon, authorities are asking for help, finding two persons of interest in Friday's shooting. Take a good look at the two people Philadelphia police are looking for tonight. On the left, Taj Lennon, just 15 years old. On the right, Tyree Lennon, who's 22. The two are cousins and persons of interest in this triple homicide in Longcrest. The shooting started around 3.30 on Friday on the 5900 block of Palmetto Street. Today, police revealed that two groups of mostly teenagers arrived at this house a short time earlier. Based on the information we received, they go into a house on that block for some sort of transaction. At some point during their meeting, uh, gunfire erupted, resulted in four shooting victims. Killed were 14-year-old Salah Fleming, 17-year-old Malik Ballard, and 18-year-old Khalif Fresgi. A 16-year-old was also shot in the chest, but managed to run out of the house and is now in the hospital. We believe they're some sort of friends. What type of friends they are, it's questionable. Shortly after that shooting, police located a black Ford Edge and arrested a 15 and 16 year old in connection to the shooting. But tonight, police need help finding two more people. They say have prior convictions. They're asking parents to be more involved in their children's lives as nearly everyone involved was under the age of 18. Hop Out Blick likely knew that it was only a matter of time before he too would become a wanted man. So a few days later, he would post on his Instagram claiming his innocence by writing, I do not have any involvement in drugs or sales of drugs, nor partake in any involvement in street crime. This account is strictly for entertainment purposes only. And that any names I mention in music is all made up for my fans and I do not participate in any kind of crime or criminal activity. But unfortunately for Blick, despite his absolutely bulletproof denial in early June, he would also become a wanted man. And by early July, Kevin Yip, aka BD, had also been added to that list. However, the police wouldn't be able to arrest these youths in the following weeks. Meanwhile, Hop Out Blick wouldn't exactly be laying low, as in early July, he would drop a music video with a very telling title, Where You Been, which begins with a clip of Blick with other torture members hanging out in a park, seemingly still in Philly. Although it's not clear when the video was shot, he was still dissing the ops, telling them that you could be the next K or kill. Blick then begins the song with a bar that sounds like it was likely recorded after the triple killing, as he addresses where he's been, saying that he's been out the way getting money, but also saying that he's an active rapper who's still sliding. 
and that unlike their ops, they really got bodies. He would also feature on the songs of other rappers like the song I Miss Zom by YBC Doll, where he would continue to taunt his ops, saying how he was going to catch a member of the West Side Mafia and kill them, even mentioning a specific car brand they were sliding in. Although this wouldn't seemingly be one of the car brands actually used during the triple killing. He would also rap how the tortures have beef with the whole of Philly and diss a particular person called Cam, who he would claim got killed for dissing or talking out of place. This person would allegedly be a 19 year old illustrator and rapper by the name of Cameron Scott Bay, who was killed in April 2021 outside his grandmother's house on the 1800 block of Mohican Street, although Cam reportedly lived on West Sharpnack Street, which is in Westside Mafia's territory. And if dropping songs and full music videos while being on the run wasn't enough, Hop Out Blick would also seemingly also do interviews, one of these getting dropped in early July, where Hop Out Blick can be seen with none other than PNBFA, the interviewer beginning the video, asking where the two have been, then responding, they've just been out the way. Yo, it's fed baby, real fed baby, but I'm here with Look his ass. The real FA. I've been looking for y'all, bro. Aww. Where y'all been at, bro? I missed y'all. I ain't been around. We just been off the radar. Nobody really looking for us. Around for real. We just don't do social media. We ain't for that shit. Anymore. What about you, baby? Where you at? It's a little bit, y'all. I bought three, all right? Like you said. Taking a mental break. The pure audacity of the interview wasn't lost on the audience, who would make comments saying, isn't this man wanted? And how the vibe during the interview was pure regret. How they looked very stressed and mentioning the intensity of being on the run, but still posing with guns during the interview. Indeed, PNBFA would say during the interview, how everyone should stay away from the street life as it only comes with a lot of pain, which is what rappers and gang members always tend to say during interviews, but unsurprisingly given the circumstances, in this case, it really seemed that he meant it. School, get your diploma, do whatever the I gotta do to make your family happy. It ain't nothing in the streets, but a lot of pain, sleepless nights, making your family upset, all that. Shit. Just keep doing you. Everybody gonna love you for who you is. They ain't accept it. Only five days after this interview dropped, on July the 6th, PNB FA, aka Tyree Lennon, would be arrested and charged for the shooting. Meanwhile, Blick would keep releasing music. In fact, putting out an entire album in mid-July, aptly titled Don't Believe the Rumors, which begins with the song PTSD, where Blick raps truly schizophrenic bars, first saying how he's innocent and is getting framed for the murders of Salah Fleming and Malik Ballard, aka La and Leaky, and he then later specifies that he's on the run for two homicides because people are lying on him, saying that he's innocent and even specifying in an ad lib how he's never killed anybody. For immediately flipping the script and now rapping how the cops think he's in hiding but really he's sliding and that they hit someone with an assault rifle and he started flying. The same theme would continue on other songs making even Chicago drill rappers like Lil Jeff and Q50 seem tame in comparison when it comes to self-incrimination. In the song Snitch K the chorus is seemingly all about the triple killing the Blick once again claiming that they've been framed and that they'd never even shot anybody before seemingly calling the fourth shooting victim who would survive a snitch and saying how they could have actually had six people dead in an alley. This either referring to the triple killing where there would in fact be five people present from the buyer's side, according to the witness, or another shooting. He then says how he's riding around with Baby S, likely referring to Baby Stu, aka Taj Lennon, before going on to say that one dude is supposed to be dead, and when he got grabbed by the cops, he immediately begun telling on murders, perhaps again referring to that fourth victim. The verse in the song is even crazier, with Blick starting to say how they're not beefing with the no chills as they got the cops involved, then once again claiming that he's getting framed, and that the other side is lying, and that he wasn't there during the shooting. Blick then appears to forget everything he just rapped, and then continues to rap how someone had a gun on their waist, but they took it off them and that they don't dare talk about Switchy aka Leafy because the torches gave them double coffins and that the torches hop out and start shooting and the victims try to run but the torches catch them and if you don't start shooting you're going to see your friends dying before again repeating that he's on the run for two homicides because people are talking but they're just lying to the cops because Blick is just an artist. But somehow Blick had even more self-incriminating songs in the stash, one of these being called Took a Risk which he would either leak himself or it would get leaked by someone else sometime during the summer of 2023 and in the song Blick raps how Salah aka La got hit in the chest, so he started spitting blood, while Leaky got left dead on the sidewalk, before specifying that the torches have two new victims, who they call Double L, La and Leaky, and that they throw down L's for these two, and throw L's up for their friend Leafy. He then continues to say that Salah should have used his gun, but he didn't, and that Leaky was just in the way, so the shooters left him leaking. He would then also say that he should have known that someone named Chill was going to tell, because he was scheming, but that you would have also thought that he died the way he was bleeding. This again seemingly being yet another reference to the fourth victim who survived. The Philly law enforcement must have been listening to these songs with very mixed feelings. On the one hand, Blick was laying it all out there like he was Jim Carrey and Liar Liar, seemingly incapable of not saying what was on his mind.
mind. But on the other hand, he was still on the run, making the police look like fools with his insane online antics. But then, in late August 2023, something would happen, and the local drill media would begin to post that Blick had passed away again, and his ops like Westside Mafia and CCK would immediately hop online and start trolling. He got his number. Why nobody smoking? Yeah. Yo, no, 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 no. yo fam, Mo, you can come get high with me, bro. That's what I was doing. I was rolling. I'm rolling. He, he trying to get that phone call. He not answering. Not gonna answer it. Nah, PNB might be broke after this one. Broke. Little Ron, I'm about to slide. Bro, <laughs> they said they said Blick was the money getter for PNB. What? Yes. No, they bred when they got two. It was like two years ago. Oh, no, chill, bro. Chicken and waffles, the reality check. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a good job right there. Chicken and waffles, the reality check. Come on. It's like old South Dick. It's like old South Philippe Dick. It's like old South Philippe Dick. It's old South Philippe Dick. It's all of them pigs. All of them pigs. All of them pigs. Huh? Stop it. Stop it. Play that shit. Play that shit. Oh, it's my color. Yo, play that but once again, Blick was not dead, and not long after, he would hop on Instagram Live with none other than YBC Duel to show nothing had happened, and that the ops had probably killed an innocent person instead. We just had to, we just had to pull a ops card real quick. No, we're like, we just had I to just see if they was going today. bluff. We knew they was going bluff to y'all though. They, they, they just hopped out on, on the innocent. Call me talking about, bro, you want to know how many times he got hit? <laughs> like, yo, he said, he said, yo. I'm about to call your man killer right now. He said I'm about to call your man killer right now. I said, hey. What? Just killed the innocent. Bro, bro, you got my phone ringing, Blick. Like, no. Hey, Blick, this is the second time, Blick. Get it, bro. Why do you keep cooking innocence and claiming it's me? I never felt it in my life. An unreleased song titled I'm Still Alive would later be leaked, where Blick addresses the rumours of him getting killed, as well as once again indulging in some top-notch self-snitching. Rapping how he went to sleep and woke up to the whole of Philly saying that he had died, and that the ops tried to claim that they smoked him, but he's not like La, so he's not going. As well as saying that the ops are killing innocent people to try and get him, before saying that some people thought they were his friends, but they were wrong. This being likely another reference to the bias side of that alleged gun exchange. Later in the song, Blick seemingly begins to have two personalities once again, as he's seemingly simultaneously confessing and denying having any part in the triple killing, saying how he has a warrant out for murders but he's still in the hood, and that someone thought they were locked in with him but they misunderstood. And he then once again claims that he's innocent for the murders, and that he's never killed anybody, before saying that if you ever go on a hit, don't leave any witnesses, and that people keep telling him to rap but he's just been shooting people, and that he doesn't know why other dudes are claiming like they've put him work in the streets while they're lying, because they did no getbacks for the two members from No Chills that quote unquote we put in the dirt. We. Then, only a few days after the rumours of him being dead, Blick would drop another self-snitching anthem titled Double Coffins together with a music video. A true truly demonic lullaby that barely even has any drums or bounce, just a haunting ambient melody, and Blick seemingly confessing to his crimes back to back, with one commenter describing the song as the most demonic crash out music that they had ever heard. In the track, Blick raps how young boys died for playing tough, and that Leafy let off a switch because he noticed that someone from the buyer's side did a wrong move, but continues to say how the torchers gave the belt to no chills and gave them double coffins, and how these young boys thought the torchers were cool with them until they double crossed them, before again saying how Switchy aka Leafy noticed what the buyers were planning, so he started shooting, and how they could have stood over someone but left him crawling, this likely being a reference to Leaky who was found dead on the sidewalk. Blick then also once again claims that the witness is lying to the cops, so he's trying to kill him, before also claiming that they shot him from the stomach up and questioning how he can still be walking after that. A few days after the release of Double Coffins, Blick would appear in another interview where he and the interviewer would refer to him as the most wanted. Oh my bad man, most wanted, they know I'm still outside though, feel me? I ain't hiding the whole time, I've been slying, feel me? Already know it man. This is going to be a good one for him, you know what I'm saying? So, America's most wanted, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, I know, but go ahead, introduce yourself to the people who's, who ain't too familiar with you. Yeah, already right, know. It's how about Blake? <laughs> The interviewer would also recount Blick meeting the rapper T Grizzly, and how Grizzly had told him that he has that indictment music, to which Blick would respond by saying that his music is just entertainment. Oh, he said you had that indictment music. That's yeah, bro, like I told you, bro. But all, all that shit, all that shit, like, like, like I told you, like all that shit, entertainment, so like, all that shit just for the fans' ears, like, that's my real. Next. 
Then, the following day, a rapper called Sani Goon from the Clappers with a K, part of CCK, would drop a diss towards YBC and their affiliates like the Tortures, where he would actually play the role of a defense lawyer for Blick, asking how is he calling himself Hop Out when he has never killed anybody and saying that he's false claiming bodies. By now, Blick's raps had gotten to the point that given the chance, his next hit might have been his actual written confession. But Blick wouldn't get a chance to drop another song as a free man, because only five days after the release of Double Coffins, and three days after the release of that interview, he was finally arrested on September the 7th, 2023, with someone posting a photo of him getting captured online, and soon, newspapers would report how he had been charged with two counts of murder, attempted murder, robbery, illegal gun possession, and other related crimes. And in the aftermath, pictures would also circulate of him in jail, and in 2024, the case would begin to make large headlines once again as the trial against Blick and PNB FA would be given the green light to move forward. These reports would also reveal that still in May 2024, Taj Lennon aka Baby Stu and Kevin Yip aka BD were still on the run, but it seems that both have since been captured too. The Hop Out Blick case is one of the most brave and examples of self-snitching that one could imagine, but it was also incredibly disrespectful to rap about what happened. It seemed that Philly was reaching new lows compared to its twin city for gang violence, Chicago, but nothing would be more disrespectful than Mr. Disrespectful himself, who at the end of 2023 would get creative in the most demonic ways, after one of his enemies was killed just working an honest job at a McDonald's restaurant, with Dole and his friends returning to the McDonald's restaurant over and over to film music videos and troll the staff there, and one of the most disrespectful series of music videos I've ever seen, YBC Doll would ultimately paint a target on his back as Philly's most wanted gangster rapper.